Hello folks. In today's video, we're going to take a look at the state variable active filter. Now the state variable is often referred to as the universal filter because it has three simultaneous outputs, high pass, band pass, and low pass. And with the addition of an extra op amp, you can also create a band reject or notch function. Typically this will be configured in either a three op amp sort of minimal configuration or a four op amp configuration, which is a little bit more flexible. As a block diagram, this is what we're looking at. Here's our input over here. We then go through a little scaling factor called K. This is typically a fraction. This goes into a summing amplifier. A couple other signals will be coming in here. The output goes into an integrator, which is inverting, right? Inverting integrator. That output goes into another inverting integrator. That final output here, this is actually the low pass output. The signal from the low pass output gets sent back to the summing amplifier, inverting, which I should indicate is also the case for the input coming through K, and then a piece of the uh, first integrator here. This is the bandpass output, but a piece of that comes back through another scaling box, which has the value 1 over Q, Q being the Q of the filter, of course. And then that comes back into the summing amplifier, non-inverting. And finally, right here, out of the summing amplifier, is the high-pass output. All right, so you can think of, you know, high pass has sort of like this kind of a response. The band pass has you know, that kind of a response. And finally, the low pass has that sort of response. All right, so how does this thing actually do what it does? There are two integrators. The integrators are made up with one capacitor each. So that makes two active uh, devices, two reactive devices, I should say. So this is a second order filter. Now what that means is the ultimate roll-off, right, the ultimate roll-off for the high pass and the low pass, in other words, this part here, will be 12 dB per octave or 40 dB per decade. For the band pass, that'll get split out and we'll be looking at uh, plus and minus 6 dB per octave or 20 dB per decade. Now remember what an integrator actually looks like in terms of its frequency response. So your integrator versus frequency, right, the gain of the integrator, does something like this. And that slope is 6 dB per octave decreasing. If you want to say it's a negative 6 dB per octave, you can say that too. Okay, so bearing that in mind, what ends up happening here? Well, let's just start at the uh, high pass output, okay, right here. Never mind how we got there. We'll, you know, we'll explain it in just a sec, but let's just assume we have this output that's high pass. So it only has the high frequencies above, above that uh, uh, resonant critical frequency. And we go into an integrator. So it has this kind of response. So you're starting off with something that has, you know, a response, let's say, I'll make a little diagram like this, All right? So that's kind of what the response of the circuit looks like, high frequencies, low frequencies. Now, when you integrate that, right, this is 12 dB per octave. So when you integrate that, everything gets sort of rotated. So this zero turns into a minus uh, six, and the old minus 12 turns into um, a six, okay? So we then produce a bandpass. Now you do the same thing with the bandpass, and what ends up happening, right? In other words, we go through another one of these integrators. Well, this steepens up, and this 
gets rotated back to here. So here we are with our low pass response. Now we take the low pass response. Right, so we have this kind of response. We feed that back, stay. We feed that back to the input, subtracting it. So if you subtract a signal that's basically all low frequencies from the original frequency, what do you end up with? You end up with something that's all the high frequencies. Right? That's how we got the high pass. Finally, we take a piece of the band pass, in other words, that area right around the resonant, and we sum that in with the original signal. So that allows us to vary the signal right around the tuning frequency, and that's how we adjust the Q. Okay? Now, so there's no confusion about what's happening here. There are three outputs, but they can't be independently tuned. In other words, you can't have like this guy at one kilohertz and this thing at 100 hertz and this thing at five kilohertz. They're all gonna have the same tuning frequency. They're all gonna line up in that respect. Now, if we look at um, the sort of Bode plot for these, typically, it doesn't have to be this way, but typically, the way we'll configure these things are unity gain. All right, so right here, we'll call this the axis zero dB, as, it, as is usually the case. If you have a bandpass filter, you're going to get something that kind of goes like this. All right, so here's your center frequency, your tuning frequency. We would set that up to be zero. I like to call that the peak gain. This slope is 6 dB per octave. This slope is 6 dB per octave. And then depending on what the Q is, you can have a greater slope or a lesser slope in this region, right? High Q obviously is going to be really steep. Now for the other two, for the high pass and the low pass, this, by the way, before I continue, this whole thing can be scaled up and down. Like I said, it's typically set for this to be zero, but it doesn't have to be. You can actually have this thing you really want to, you can actually have the thing kind of, you know, come up like this or, you know, be down here. In any case, for the high pass, low pass, what we wind up with is at high cues, we end up with a resonance right at the, uh, the tuning frequency. So we, we wind up with something, if we set the peak gain, right, that peak value, the maximum value to zero again, we end up with something that might look like this, right, for a low pass. For a, uh, for a high pass, we would see the same kind of thing, right, would come in and there would be this resonant peak, right, those would line up. So this slope, 12 dB per octave, this slope, 12 dB per octave, there's your tuning frequency. Again, this is what I call the peak gain. This right here, this is the bandpass gain, right? What is this variation right here? So often that's just referred to as the gain. You know, what is the gain? You could shift this whole thing up so that the gain is zero dB, but that means your peak is going to be up here somewhere. Okay? So these can be adjusted just so that you understand what's actually happening here. Okay, now to to design these things, as we have with other active filters, we're going to come up with a template. So as I said, there's a 3-op amp version and there's a 4-op amp version. The 4-op amp version is nice because we can do independent control of the gain and the Q. And it looks something like this. We're going to come into a uh, summing amplifier first. Now, I am not going to draw bias compensation resistors because it's going to get a little busy. So I'm just going to return these um, non-inverting inputs right back to ground. So this corresponds to this. I'm going to go through an integrator. So here's the capacitor for the integrator second integrator
that capacitor. Right there is the low pass output. Then we're going to take this signal, we're going to feed it back into the summing amplifier. And we need our little uh, 1 over Q amplifier. So we're going to have a little op amp back here. That's going to have two resistors associated with it. And of course, one for the uh, summing part of it. And of course, this has to go back to the bandpass output, which is right here. And then the tap for the high pass. Okay, so what we're going to do is, as usual, we're going to set a uh, tuning frequency, critical frequency, equal to one radian per second. All resistors and capacitors are going to be equal to ohm farad values. So the caps are one farad each. These resistors, most of them are going to be one ohm. There are going to be some exceptions, as you'll see. All right, so this guy's an ohm. He's an ohm. That's an ohm. Okay, so the exceptions are this one right here. This has a value of Q. Now think about that. Remember the gain is RF over RI, so that's 1 over Q. There's your 1 over Q. And then this resistor right here has a value of 1 over K. And again, the gain is RF over RI, so it's 1 over 1 over K. Bingo, there's your K. The other thing to notice is this is coming back into the minus terminal of the su standard summing amplifier. Over here I'm drawing it as plus. But notice we have an inverting amplifier. So it's invert, invert, and that gives us the plus. Right? So this is our template. Right? We're all ready to sort of rock and roll here. Now, we have to decide, do I want high pass, low pass, band pass? What's the frequency? Right? What's the, the, the Q I'm interested in? So typically, because you have um, a bunch of op amps here, you have a lot of gain bandwidth capability. So we like to use these for higher Q bandpass filters. So as an example, let's say I want to make a bandpass filter. And what we're going to do is um, we'll set this up for a gain of 1. 0 dB if you prefer. Center frequency, we'll set this up to 5 kilohertz. And the, um, the bandwidth on this, we'll say, is plus and minus 100 hertz. Oops. So in other words, I want from 4.9 kilohertz to 5.1 kilohertz. So our approach is, uh, what we would usually do here is we would figure out what the frequency scaling is. Then we would do an impedance scale, in other words, to get sort of reasonable sized values. And that would be our design. All right. Um, we've chosen the gain of one. So that kind of ties us in with some things over here. Uh, for a, uh, a, a, uh, a peak gain of one, which is what we have here, right? The peak gain and the ordinary gain. We don't have this split like we do on the high pass, low pass. That's the same thing. So um, make a little note over here. Right, so for a 0 dB, Rick, a gain of 1, what we will uh, do is set K equal to Q. Okay, this box over, I shouldn't say K, the resistor, this resistor. Is, uh, so it's better to say, actually, you're setting 1 over K equal to Q. But the reason for this is, so I'll just say that Rn is going to be set to Q. 
In other words, it's actually going to be the same value as this resistor right here. Um, the reason for this is because for the bandpass, the uh, gain of the system is equal to K times Q. So the only way you're going to get one out of this, right, if you have uh, a certain value of Q, then K has to be one over Q. All right, so you have Q over Q, and th there's your gain of one, all right? So that's what we wind up doing for this. So that's, that, that's our stipulation here. Like I said, that's a fairly typical kind of design point. But as you'll see, we, you know, we, can, we can vary some values and uh, increase or decrease that if we want. In any case, first thing we have to do is actually find the value of Q. So if we have a plus or minus 100 hertz for the F1 and F2 on either side of F0, the total bandwidth on this is 200 hertz. And from that, we can find out what the Q is, right? Because Q is defined as the center frequency divided by the bandwidth. So we have 5 kilohertz divided by 200 hertz, which is going to get us a Q of 25. Now that's uh, you know, a fair size value, and we probably wouldn't want to do that with something like a multiple feedback filter. Certainly wouldn't want to try to create that with a, uh, you know, a high-pass, low-pass filter being cascaded. We want a nice resonant sort of circuit for this. Okay, so now that we know that, the first thing we're going to have to do is our frequency scale. So we remember that the radian frequency is 2 pi times F0. So this is going to work out 2, 2 pi times the 5 kilohertz. And that's going to get us approximately 31.42 K radians per second. All right, so we can choose to scale either the resistor values or the capacitor values. I'm going to use the caps. Um, it'll be It'll be nice because well, I'm going to get these nice round values for the resistors, uh, which in our application is going to work out well. In any case, you could do either one, right? So the caps will then be scaled because remember the uh, you know the basic frequency here that we're always uh, sort of focusing on is uh, you know we've got this one over two pi R C thing happening. So if I want to bring F zero up. I'm going to have to bring R or C down. So we're going to take C, we're going to divide it by 3142. That is going to get us 1 fair divided by 31.42K. It's going to get us 31.8 microfarads. So if we had 1 ohm, 1 ohm, 1 ohm, 1 ohm, uh, Q over here, right, we figured out it's 25. So that's going to, this is going to be 25 ohms. This thing is also going to be 25 ohms. 1 ohm, 1 ohm, 1 ohm, 1 ohm. These two caps are going to be 31.8 microfarads. That literally gets us, right, gain of 1, 5 kilohertz, 200 hertz bandwidth. Of course, it's completely impractical with those values. So that's the frequency scale. Now we have to do the impedance scale. And the idea here is, right, if, if, uh, if I can take R and bring it up and then compensate by bringing C down by the same factor, we'll keep this, the uh, frequency the same, right? So obviously we want to make, make the, the uh, resistors bigger. So we'll do a Z scale here. You know, a decent value here would probably be 10,000. So that means all these resistors, all these one ohm resistors are going to go one times 10K, 10K, right? Nice round number. That also means the, the two values that are Q are also going to get multiplied by 10. So those resistors are going to be 10,000 times, in our case, 25, 250K. And finally, the capacitors are gonna be dropped down, right? R goes up, C goes down, so we drop this by 10,000. 
I right, divide that by 10k. And we wind up with uh, 3.18 nano farads. Okay, so if I now go over to my original circuit, I start plugging values in here, right? So these are both going to be 3.18 nano. The resistors, right, these 1 ohms turn into 10 Ks. And everywhere where there's a 1, this is going to get turned into a 10 K. And then these, the Q values, like I said, are going to be um, Q25 times the scale. So this is going to be 250 K, as is this. And that's your completed design. We want bandpass, so we're going to take that as an output. And we're done. Now, you can go in here and start playing with values. Right? You can take this resistor, for example, increase and decrease it, and watch this whole curve you know, move up and down. Okay? You can come in here and change this Q. And you can watch the whole thing just sort of broaden out or tighten up depending on the value that you use for this. But as long as you match these two resistors, you're going to get this peak gain of 0 dB of unity. Right? So you, practically speaking, what you would do is figure out your Q value, set this resistor, and then just say, okay, I'll put the same thing over here. If I do need gain, then you know, I can kind of play with these values to bring them up, bring them up and down. And of course, if we were going to do a high pass or a low pass design, it would be a similar sort of approach. We would be using these outputs instead. Okay. Again, you would scale appropriately for the frequency of interest, and you would go from there. All right. So there's our completed state variable active filter design.